you open the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you, through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water.
give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life from his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he loved us first. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of the Lord. Word of God, word of God. Traveling 
evangelist. He travels on the wilderness road of Gaza. Yes, the same Gaza we read about and see in the news. There he meets the chief treasurer from the Ethiopian court of Queen Candace, who is on his way back for worship in Jerusalem. The chief treasurer is a very important person in the court. He holds the purse strings of the government. Luke, the author of Acts, tells us that he is a eunuch, probably made that way by a mandate of government so that he could not pass wealth along to any biological children. As Philip approaches the chief treasurer, he notices that he is reading a scroll from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 53, verses 7 through 9, that part of the discourse of the suffering servant. Philip explains to the Ethiopian that the suffering servant mentioned by the prophet should be interpreted as Jesus. Philip then preaches to the Ethiopian about Jesus as Savior and Lord, how by grace God sent Jesus to proclaim acceptance, forgiveness, life, and life eternal, and how through baptism this grace can be made known. As they journey together, the two men encounter water. The Ethiopian says to Philip, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? Philip answers in action. Nothing. And so he baptizes the man. Yes, or they deacons could, in some circumstances, baptize them. They still may. After this scripture tells us that Philip and the Ethiopian separate, the Ethiopian goes on his way proclaiming God and joy in Christ as does Philip. Don't be fooled into thinking that this story is a simple illustration of baptism in the early church because it's more than that. Much more. This story is one of radical grace. It proclaims the good news of God's all-inclusive love and the mandate that the church has to preach this love to all. At the time of first century Judaism, it was the teaching of the high priest's office. Now, not the people, not Judaism itself, the high priest's office, that foreigners, those not native to Israel but believed in Israel's God, were considered half Jews, second class people. The Ethiopian in our story has two strikes against him ancestry, he's from Ethiopia, and anatomy. He's a eunuch. He was both black and sterile. Society, and this included both Ethiopian and that of the high priest, considered him not worthy. Philip, by way of baptism, proclaims this not so. When Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, he proclaimed that according to God in Christ, the first century societal thinking of Israel, Ethiopia, and Rome were wrong. In the baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch, the early church preached in word and sacrament that all are welcome and all are worthy of God's love in Jesus Christ. This is our ministry yet today. This is part of our defining mission statement that we recite before every council meeting that is before us in our bulletin and in our newsletter. The baptism of the Ethiopian unit proclaims that it is not the thinking of the church to chastise or to keep at arm's length, to alienate certain persons or societal groups. It's simply not the way of God. 
Acceptance and worthiness of God's love does not depend upon heritage or lineage or ancestry or status or sexual orientation or biology. The church is the body of Christ and therefore is to be Christ, proclaiming Christ to all the world. Martin Luther preached that every Christian is to be a little Christ to every other Christian and to every other person in the world. Our gospel for today puts it this way. Our hope, our nurture, our ministry is not in society's, society's standards and hang-ups, but in the one called the vine. In our baptism, we are grafted into this vine. We embrace him who has embraced us. Our family is not limited to biology or even adoption according to law. Its basis is not kin or blood or nationality, but water. Water infused with word to claim us and all the world in God's promise of resurrection life. In the church, because of baptism, water is indeed thicker than any human blood. It's why we often refer to each other here at St. Mark's as family. The family of God's love as expressed in Jesus Christ. We should never be surprised that the good news of God seems so foreign to us, how it is often not the good news of our world. And the reason for that is because it is a grace, and grace attaches to it no specific preconditions. Sometimes that can be very hard for us to wrap our brains and our arms around. But it is the way of God. That is why we rely on the Holy Spirit to lead us and to keep us in God's way. To be like Philip in the Ethiopian and to engage in mutual conversations around God's holy word and God's holy way. The evangelism of Deacon Philip was the preaching of God's grace in Jesus to include all, even those maligned, tortured, and maimed by others. It's still the evangelism of the church today. To preach a different gospel is to preach the one that is not of Christ. It's the deacon speaking. May we listen to the truth that Deacon Philip has to tell us. Amen.
confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit with the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen, and life has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministries, lay and ordained, for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the holy baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always. God of grace. For the well-being of the earth and of all created things, for rivers, lakes, streams, and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters, especially the Susquehanna River, Renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. God of grace. For the nations and all those in authority. For local, state, and national leaders. For elected representatives at every level. And for international organizations that peace with justice may reign. God of grace. and for all who are ill or suffering, especially Liz, Grace, Vanessa, Gary, Charles, Jerry, Richard, Ashley, Lucille, April, Gary, Elsie, Virginia, Bunny, Judy, Deb, Ezra, Sheila, Kevin, Kathy, Micah, Linda, Mike, Richard, Evelyn, Walt, Kristen, Yvonne and Jerry, Ariel, John, Joe, God of grace. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of the United Churches of Lake County, County, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, for all who seek to share your love with the world, God of grace. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, help us. Like them, may we bear much fruit and become your disciples, and at the last, bring us to heavenly banquet, where all feast together at your table. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend them all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love 
Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and life-giving Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given from you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Send out, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live in the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join in our prayers with those of your saints of every time and place, and unite them with ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of resurrection and new life, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now.